So I got this from the mechanic at work. He wants a special tool made up. Let's take a look. What we've got here is a hydraulic accumulator. If I had to guess, I'd say this is a bellows type because it's a very low profile. So what we're trying to do is get this section out here. So this is a threaded section in here and we've got these four pinholes to pick up. There is the easy way of getting this apart. So we're gonna need a special pin spanner to go in here, pick up the four holes and clear this. What this is is a hydraulic accumulator for a down the hole hammer. And what that is, it's a rotary percussion hammer the driving end of the hammer is actually down in the hole, chipping away at the rock, and under the force of compressed air, it blows all the debris back up the hole and up to the surface. And there's a whole collection system and everything to catch all the debris. All right. We'll have to switch over to outie jaws today. I found that one of the ends of this stock was heavily deformed. This wasn't too much of an issue, I just had to keep cutting until I got into more round, true material. I drilled and then progressively bored the hole out bigger and this is just so I can clear the boss in the middle of the accumulator. This part of the tool needs to slip past an o-ring so I put a generous bevel on here just so it can't snag on that o-ring. Get in there. Over at the mill, we'll put some holes in. Now, there are some issues with this setup. I've only got two points of contact on this. I don't own a V-block, so I can't put one in for better contact. I'm gonna drill four holes in here, so all the force is downwards. We need to work out what these hole centers are. To do that, I'm gonna be using some dowel pins, broken end mills, and high-speed steel tool shanks. These holes are something like 10.3 millimetres. There's quite a bit of slop in here. So to measure these, I'm going to get some calipers and measure on the outside. These will flex in. Measure on the inside, they'll flex out. And if I measure at the same height, I'm thinking the in and out flex will cancel out and we'll get a true reading, or at least near enough for what we're doing here. Averaging those, it looks like 78 mil. We'll just do a quick idiot check. The other way we can do this, which probably is better now that I think about it, and I'm about to spot my four holes. This is the side that will make contact with the plate and I want to drill from this side because if my drill wanders at all, my hole will no longer coincide with the pin centers. Ah, well that's not good. So I've still got plenty of travel, plenty of travel that way. So I'm going to shove the entire vise forward. Moving the vise forward, I found there were some issues, so in the end I had to turn it sideways, and this gave me heaps of clearance for all four holes. The hole that I'd already drilled, I decided to reset that position with an end mill, because I didn't like my chances of everything lining up. And as is always the problem with this mill, I haven't got much vertical height, so drilling is an issue. And it just clears. It's a little bit of overkill, but I'd ream the holes after drilling. Well, if nothing else, we've made a nice ashtray. Better see if this fits. That fits over. And it clears all this. Oh, 
that fit is actually really good. Now for the actual pins, I'm going to use 4140. That's a nice sliding fit and then we'll lock tight that in place. I quickly made up these dowel pins out of the 4140. Let's put it together. Whoop. Speaking with the mechanic, he's happy to punch these out if he needs to. So this will help give him something to smack on. So I'll lock tight these in place. Bloop. I probably should have put it in from the other way so I haven't got Loctite sticking out on this end. I decided to use the accumulator to set the depth of the pins so they wouldn't bottom out in use. Okay. So while I've got the Loctite in there that's going to take longer to go off, I'm going to put a little dab of super glue on the outside just to hold it in place and then we can walk away. Fun fact about super glue, moisture activated, you can get the proper activators but if you blow on it your breath will make it go off faster. I've given the Loctite a bit of time to go off and now these are all set and they're solid. Now remember we're trying to unscrew this section here so that can go in but we need a method of turning this. Now originally I was going to cut out a flat on each side in order to clamp on two flats here and here that's a massive tool so I'm going to weld a bit of a hex on the back here and to locate it properly I'll take this over to the lathe we'll drill this possibly tap it and then on the back here we'll have a go at welding on a hex. Now I know what you're thinking, that hex is way too small, and I agree. That's the biggest hex stock I had on hand, and I think it's going to be enough to just crack the threads. We'll see how it goes. If this doesn't work, I'll remove it and try something else. I'm not sure how well my Loctite's going to hold up from the heat that it got exposed to, but for now it seems to be holding. Hopefully there's been no warp of this, and that our pins will still fit. Oh yeah. We'll see if we can crack these threads open. Mm. Jeez. Something tells me my world is not going to hold. I'm going to have to get a hammer. Right, let's flip this around. So the centre of my vise is here. When I've got this long lever arm, it's obviously got a lot of leverage on the vise. If I instead run it this way, so I'm putting the force here, Chance are I'm not going to twist the vise at all. The force will be centred. Maybe. <gasps> Got movement. Hydraulics don't store that much pressure because it's an incompressible fluid. This being an accumulator, it's effectively a big spring in the system. So there is potential for something to spurt out, but we'll see how we go. Crack the seal, just let that pressure come out. Hey, pressure's off. So that's what was making it so difficult to undo. There we go, bladder. Boop, boop. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that. That was a chance to do something different and give the guys at work a bit of a hand. There's still gonna be people concerned about this hex. If something does happen, they'll just chop it off, replace it with something else and get someone who actually knows how to weld to put it on. In the end, I did cut this off. And I decided to weld it. Thanks for watching.